Why don't we go to break? Because we got Terry Gilliam here. Yeah. And uh, we'll get into it with him about uh, the new movie. And it's called the, Ima uh, the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus. Yeah. Wow. It's in Christmas, it theaters on Christmas Day. And Jimmy saw half the movie so far and loved it. Loved what I saw. I can't wait to talk to Terry Gilliam. Life of Brian, right? Fucking uh, meaning of life, right? Yeah, twelve monkeys. Big part twelve of, uh, monkeys. Monty Python. Oh, is a God. Legend. Holy shit! Twelve monkeys was a great movie. No, oh, my God. How cool is this? Terry Gilliam in studio. What's up, sir? Just oh. coming in and meeting all of us for the first time. <laughs> yes, indeed. I'm terribly frightened and nervous. Oh no! No, no stop. please no, be gentle with me. No Sorry. reason to be at all. We should no, be no, frightened of you. You're Terry Gilliam. <laughs> No, I'm not. We, you've never seen the real Terry Gilliam. <laughs> I'm a fraud. I'm a double. Where'd he go? We were just going over everything you've done, and we're just blown away. Twelve yeah. monkeys. Come on. Yeah, that's a, it's a wasted the life. Monty I've Python lived. stuff. <laughs> yeah, that was forty years ago. I My know. God. I know you're walking. Whoa. You know, this is a walking corpse here. <laughs> no. You really are, though, in the comedy world. I mean, you really are royalty. I mean, uh, yeah. I mean, you, Python. It's just there's there's no. I've never heard a disrespectful thing said about Monty Python or anything I've done by anybody in comedy. You just, not yeah. one person in comedy is yeah. everyone. Mm -hmm. eh. It's very influential. Yeah. How'd you get uh, tied up with them being an American? Um, they needed somebody to make them feel superior. <laughs> oh, is that? <laughs> yes. Uh, right, that I makes brought in. sense. <laughs> yes, because I didn't speak the language. And yes. so <laughs> the Queen's English. <laughs> so they could go around, oh, Terry, isn't that very interesting? It says bunch. It says bunch of water a moment ago. Oh, fantastic. <laughs> That's called a lake, Terry. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so was it, was it the animation that brought you with them? No, it, it actually began here in New York. I, uh, after college, I went and I was working on a magazine called Help. I was editing with Harvey Kurtzman, who began Mad Comics. Oh, wow. And, um, and we did these things called Fumetti, which were basically like a cartoon strip, except they were photographs. It was, you know, like a still movie. And people talked in bubbles. And I was always getting actors to appear in them for $15 a day we could pay. And, there was a thing called Cambridge Circus, which was the Footlights Review from Cambridge University, and John Cleese, Graham Chapman were in it, and several other people that went on to become the goodies. Um, and uh, I got John to appear in one of these photo stories, and we became, mm. became friends, and years later I went off to uh, England, and he by then was quite successful in television. I was still working in magazines. I said, I want to get into television. He introduced me to some people. I started doing stuff. And then the stuff was with a, uh, a kids' uh, comedy program that Mike Palin, Terry Jones, and Eric Idle were writing and performing. And that was the beginning of the connection. Mm. Do you realize that uh, a lot of, I think, a lot of um, first sexual images that a lot of uh, guys in my age bracket saw was on Monty Python on uh, uh, public television uh, and it was a lot of your animations showed you know topless women large breasted uh, women yes, yes. large breasted women and it was kind of uh, it was very exciting to see that uh, <laughs> at, that, at that age. You know, you'd watch it on uh, well, on public television. It was hard to find naked women of when we were growing it up. Was. So yeah. We want to bow to you that you gave us a little something something to look at. <laughs> My first direction was Eric Idle in the Life of Brian. <laughs> <laughs> no, and we got to play women as well. Yes, uh, yes, and wearing of, false breasts. <laughs> yeah, a lot of cross dressing going on. Uh, There's something on that free about program. it. It was actually frightening when you first come to England because you know. Drag acts are very funny. They've been mm -hmm. traditional in England. And it's kind of a shock. You don't realize it. At first you assume, okay, there, there's some kind of weird sexuality going on. They're just men who <laughs> dress up as women and it frees you. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, with the, uh, with the, uh, voices too, of course. The penguin on the telly and all that uh, it, fun it's, stuff. It's yeah. liberating this yeah. stuff. <laughs> Apparently. You, did, you guys did it a lot. <laughs> His argument about, I want to have babies. You want to have babies? babies. <laughs> it's just it's so silly and bizarre and you don't brilliant. have a womb where are you going to keep it <laughs> and it goes it, yeah it really was a uh, very uh, w was it as cutting edge over there as it was here because in america monty python was just like there was nothing else like it and I, I think python came from a tradition i don't know how familiar people were with spike milligan over here mm -hmm. uh he was part of the goon show which peter sellers had been part of and that was one of the things that brought me to england this very anarchic, surreal comedy. And I think we were just the children of that. Uh, and then, obviously, the, our children have been South Park and Saturday Night Live and blah, mm -hmm. blah, blah. You just pass it on. Yeah. Did you guys resent, like, the, the, the big the big names in, in 
in British comedy, at least in America, we're, we're always, uh, it was, you heard about uh, Monty Python and Benny Hill. Like, those were the two shows. Did you guys like Benny Hill? Or did you look down on Benny Hill? Or did you think it was... Well, that was always was funny when it came to America, because somehow we were compared. We seemed to be the same kind of comedy. Oh, hell yeah. no. And we just went, what, what, what the <laughs> fuck is yeah. this? The man yeah. just does tit jokes. <laughs> oh, you know, oh, sorry, we do tit jokes as well. <laughs> no, we just, we seemed to be at opposite ends in England, but in America, it was... It was America's, very different, yeah. the two yeah, shows. Yeah, I never uh, understood that. Yeah, well, there was a lot of just great Monty Python, a lot of great non sequiturs that just didn't make any sense, but were hysterically funny. That's, just left I don't you know, sitting you there know, going, "What the hell did I just say?" Well, we had you know six people, all who were pretty good at what they did, and we, nobody telling us don't do that, mm -hmm. don't work for this kind of audience. It was just to please ourselves. Right. In fact, it pleased a lot of people. It was quite a, a big surprise to all of us. Yeah. We remember those days. Those yeah. days were fun when you, just, <laughs> when you just did it to please yourself, and you didn't have to worry about lawyers and and yeah. political correctness and all that other horse you could shit. Just go into the bathroom, we close had a few the door, get the magazine out, and yeah. please yeah. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. Please, please we yourself. Few, we had a few years of that. It was nice. <laughs> and now uh, you're corporate, are you? Yeah. Uh, now we're, uh -oh. now we're now fighting we're corporate <laughs> chills. We're fighting the good fight. You'd be proud, but <laughs> we try. But it's getting exhausting. Really? <laughs> yeah. It's, I mean, this is actually what's happening. It's happening in films and everything. All the talent is being pushed out, and the last people. On the sinking boat are the bureaucrats. Yes. Ba boom. <laughs> yeah. They, ne they never fire each other. They just go from job to job. They give themselves raises when they put raises. This is every company yeah. on the freeze on everybody else, and they never fire themselves for their shitty programming decisions. Yeah. It's just the talent that gets dumped. What, Eric Idle said something recently, uh, maybe it was a year ago, about uh, likability, because there's an obsession with likability in comedy. And he goes, I don't want you to be likable. I want you to be funny. Like, I like somebody who makes me laugh. Mm -hmm. And uh, he's right. This obsession with being nice and being marketable and pinchable. It's like, that doesn't mean you're funny. Yeah. No, no. Mm -hmm. I mean, I, we went out of our way to shock people all the time. It was trying to keep people awake. Television <laughs> is such a, you know, a deadening kind of art form. So if we could do things to shock... I There was one thing we never did, which I wanted to do, which was do a program where we're slowly turning the sound down as we're doing this, this <laughs> thing. So it's down to almost nothing. And everybody giving people at home time to get up and turn the volume up on their television set. <laughs> yes. And man, blast it with the biggest sound we could and blow up every set in the country. <laughs> we didn't nice. do that. We kind of we kinda did something like that on radio. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> we said we had something really important, but we have to whisper it, so turn up your radio real loud. And then, and then we uh, like blasted a, a scream. Great. Yeah. Or I think it's important. Man. I mean, or I think with Python, right. also what was easier then, which, you know, you had three, then four channels in England, television. So mm -hmm. everybody was seeing, seeing the show at the same time. I mean, now everything is still, the great diaspora has occurred. Everything, there's a million radio stations, mm -hmm. there's 900 television stations. Mm -hmm. So that experience of all being together, an entire country doing something together at one yeah, time. Yeah, true. DVR and everything's, you know, watched at a different time. You can yeah. record it and then watch it later. And yeah, there isn't that really the next day where people start talking about what they saw the previous which night. Which was such a great feeling when you... Yeah. Oh, Everyone was talking about the exact same thing. And that's now, what was happening. Now this is a weird catch-up thing. Like, yeah. oh, I talked about that two weeks ago. It's hard. I'm curious whether we'll all come back to a smaller number of uh, sources. Mm -hmm. I think uh, I think the social networking is helping that. Because, like, I mean... Is we're, it helping or hurting well, it? <laughs> well, no, like the Tiger Woods thing. I mean, everyone's on it right now. You know what I mean? <laughs> They're just... Uh, uh, Every woman in, in the country's <laughs> yeah, on it. Yeah, really yeah. on it. There's yeah. money. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> what do you think of that whole Tiger thing? Tiger, it is Woody. You think uh, it's, it's, a, it's a great story, isn't it? It's incredible. I mean, to have somebody that clean, Thank that you. perfect, to suddenly become human. <laughs> right. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. And apparently... They're saying, I didn't realize, we were talking about it last night, that, you know, golf is the most adulterous sport out there. And finally, he's blown, he's blown the cover of the whole thing. And all the golfers hate him. <laughs> yeah, that's like, now look what you did. Yeah. We, we were all, no all, we've all been uh, out nice there guys. playing our nine holes. Ha, mm -hmm. ha. Actually, is, I think it's ten now, isn't <laughs> yeah, it? Seven, we're, on ten. Ten. we're on the back nine. <laughs> we're starting the back nine there, Terry. Yeah, that's a very good point. Yeah. Yeah, because uh, we all know that a lot of these athletes are cheating when they're on the road. Yeah. But golf was one of those things like, oh, these guys can't possibly be cheating. It's golf. And apparently they're the worst. Oh, they're going to hate him. Yeah. Nobody's That's interested in their point. personal lives. Their personal lives are seen right. as so dull compared to the NBA or the NFL. And yeah. now you hear like, yeah. wow, these guys are yeah. pieces of shit. It's like, oh, it's fantastic. Oh, did she really hit him? Is that where it started? We're, we're trying uh, to figure yeah, out. Yeah, like there's so many little... They, he's doing a good job of keeping everything kind of um, half out there. Like, yeah. you only got half the story out there. Yeah. and He uh, hasn't been photographed, has he? No, no. no so no, the yeah. swelling is going yeah. down, hopefully. Yeah, I'm sure. Well, you hear the latest? There's a woman that was rushed to the hospital from his house? 
Yeah, what? Two o'clock. A this few morning. hours ago. For real. The picture. Uh, if you can oh, look God. Up to that screen. Ah, oh, whatever. It's Wait, not. Yeah. It's not facing your way. But a blonde woman was rushed from so, Tiger's home. Looks like his wife. On advanced life yeah. support to the hospital. Oh, no. For real. For real. Oh, no. Amazing. That's the latest. That's actually the bad side. This that is not story good, just gets like better and better. <laughs> though. Just how many things are going to go on with this guy next? But, it, at some point, I mean, I think the country almost needs it because there's such a hypocrisy. Mm -hmm. Everybody's pretending things are fine and under control, which they're obviously not. <laughs> yeah. And Tiger's now, you know, open the, the Pandora's box. Mm -hmm. All of our lives will be revealed. Soon. Yeah, there's no, there's no shutting that one, man. Yeah. He, uh, he's going to have to just fess up to it or quit the game and just leave sure <laughs> go into exile uh i want to talk to you about uh movies now uh, how how did you how'd you make that jump and was it easy for you i mean uh yeah it actually was i mean i always wanted to direct films but uh, i couldn't see how one worked one's way up through the system i've never been good at making tea for other people and all that stuff and, and so it's finally when with python you know we'd become successful enough that people wanted to give us money to make a movie and terry jones and i both were hankering to do the job we said Anybody named Terry gets to direct, and we raised our hands, and everybody agreed with us, and we were directors. That wow, that's that. a, you just volunteered for it. And yeah, we got it. And we've been working, I've been working my way down from the top ever since. <laughs> <laughs> what was the first movie? Monty Python and the Holy Grail. Yeah, the Holy, Holy Grail, Grail, of course. One of my favorite lines from that movie, I don't know why, is when, when, when the killer rabbit, he just goes, rabbits do, coming up. <laughs> just, I don't know why, it's so great. No, but, but uh, that's one of my few lines in that film. Rabbits do, coming up. <laughs> it, was, no, it was, what was so interesting about that film is we didn't have any actual experience in filmmaking, but we all knew the principles and we'd been doing television. And we get up in Glencoe in the, in the, 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 the mountains of Scotland and the, the equipment had to be carried down from the road uh, down across the raging river, up the other mountainside to the Bridge of Death, which is there. And on our very first day, the camera broke on our very first shot. <laughs> and that, well, that was our introduction to filmmaking. Yeah, great. <laughs> the other great thing is that two, day, two weeks before we started shooting up there, we were thrown out of all the castles that we were supposed to be shooting because the uh, National Trust said we wouldn't respect the dignity we wouldn't respect the dignity of the fabric of the building. <laughs> These are places where the most awful tortures yeah, and rapes yeah, and pillagings have gone on. But a bit of comedy, we're going to take the walls down like Jericho. <laughs> One of my favorite lines is, uh, someday this will all be yours. What, the curtains? The curtains. <laughs> no, I, it's, it holds up that film. Yeah, yeah, absolutely yeah. does. I remember watching, God, yeah, I remember watching that just years ago and of course, maybe partaking in a little uh, of marijuana with my friends mm -hmm. in watching it and uh just hysterical man Absolutely. yeah it does still hold it, up it definitely holds up and uh a film like um 12 monkeys i love that whole concept yeah. that whole time travel and paradox and really? kind of weird thing going on and um a, a lot of those uh strange i don't know uh, mechanics, the uh, the gearing and and all the, that weird kind of thing. Is that was that coming from you? Yeah, I'm afraid so. I just love the idea of you've got to rebuild society, civilization, and all you've got are scraps, bits of things. Yeah, yeah. And you're sort of gluing them all together and sewing them up and and trying to make a, uh, a system that works. And yeah, I love all that. I just I love the the it's either the decay of things or the try to reconstitution of things. Yeah, it seems you've always been into like gears and. Hogs. <laughs> yeah. It's it's how things work. At least they used to work until the electronic age come. Now, I'm so frustrated because before a cog, you could get your file out and make it work or clean it out. I don't know what happens. Now, we just throw things away. Throw it away by another one. Yeah. Yeah, exactly. What it. makes you laugh? Like what? Like what? What is your? Would you say is your favorite all-time comedy or something you can watch over and over and laugh? I that I don't do. It's like I don't even watch Python because uh, laughter to me is uh, based on surprise, and that's mm. what always gets me. So it's like someone like Bill Hicks. I had never oh. seen his work, and then somebody said, "Bill Hicks, you got to see it." And I got all these CDs, DVDs of his stuff. And the man is an utter, utter genius. Yeah. I love Bill Hicks. Oh, I mean, when I was younger, it was, you know, it was, it was Lenny Bruce. Mm -hmm. Because you know he really did break the bounds, and and and, uh, it's, it, you know, and we did something in 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 Life of Brian that was a bit Lenny Bruce like, because he was trying to always take the the sting out of words, and we and you know and you can't say the and all this thing people are frightened of I words, know, yeah. and the minute you're frightened of words, you're frightened of thinking. It starts happening. So we've got this scene in Life of Brian where Brian, uh, his mother says he's the son of a Roman, and 
Is it Roman? I'm a Jew. I'm a Red Sea pedestrian, a kike, a shady. <laughs> he says every derogative word you could say to somebody Jewish, and I'm proud of it. Is what he says. <laughs> and I thought that was so important to take all the words, all the negative words, pile them together and say, fuck you, I'm proud of it. Yeah, yeah. You call me whatever you want. We still haven't learned our lesson. <laughs> no. Because now no. the N-word thing is ridiculous. Now more people are actually saying the word by saying the N-word. <laughs> but I got to hear the thing uh, recently in, in London, somebody was referring to um, black Americans and said uh, African Americans. And right. They were told, no, they said Afro Americans. And it was corrected because African Americans. So yeah. it, the N letter is still very important, if not yeah, the N word. Apparently, <laughs> yes. <laughs> and that kind of distinction is ridiculous because it's missing the point. I mean, to me, because I was very much involved in the civil rights movement, and I thought the whole point was we would all be equal, so skin color didn't matter, so if it's a black guy, I could call him a bastard, because he's a bastard, not because he's black. Mm -hmm. Or, you know, anybody. I just want that freedom to be honest about who people are and what they are. Yeah, how come you can't uh, just call someone an asshole if they're being an asshole yeah. without being accused of mm -hmm. having uh, some Racism or sexism. Or yeah, some, yeah, yeah, yeah. Some kind of sinister motive. Sometimes people are just assholes. Yeah. <laughs> you know, and you want to be able to use out. the words that are appropriate exactly <laughs> good english <laughs> did you guys get any uh was there any criticism you got in uh for, for doing python that actually surprised you or things that were people objected to that you were like i can't believe they're bothered by that uh it was actually john cleese actually vetoed one little bit of mine one animation mm. of mine which was shocking we had this principle that if somebody in the group didn't like it so severely that they could actually exercise a veto mm. and we had a thing going on about silly religions and at one point this silly vicar is on the phone and there's some sort of interference on the phone line and i'm following uh, telegraph telephone poles with the lines going and we're bouncing across the countryside and suddenly boom we come to one and there's a robber hanging on it, and the next one has got Jesus hanging on it, oh. and the next one, it's the crucifixion. And, oh. and that was the, that was the, the static on the line. And, <laughs> and John, really, funny. John panicked about it and, and said, I'm gonna use my veto, and it was cut out of the show. Did he panic about that because of repercussions he thought was gonna happen, or did it personally I think it was him. repercussions. I yeah. think he thought we were going to offend too many people. But then mm -hmm. we went on and did Life of Brian. Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah. which, wow. <laughs> and back then, that was something, like in the mid-70s, early 70s, that was mm. something going, like the church, that would get, now that wouldn't get you in trouble, Islam would get you in trouble. But yeah. back then, that was pretty brave. Catholicism like that would get Real you in trouble. Real brave for the time. Well, in, in, the, in the States, I mean, I remember Variety, you know, the, the, the trade magazine, showbiz magazine, there were on one whole page about Life of Brian. Uh, there were two columns on the Catholics protesting, two columns on the Jews protesting. <laughs> oh. Wow. Two, two columns on the on the Protestants. We got them all. Yeah. And I thought, that's how happy great. you were. Yeah, all right. You, you did the thumbs up. Yeah, good. Your your movie. I saw. Here's the story behind what what I this movie, which I I saw half it. And I'll tell you why. Cause we got a screener DVDs, and we get up at five in the morning to do this. And uh, I put it on last night, and I didn't want to fall asleep because I, I have been up for almost twenty four hours, and I loved loved it. I mean, I'm not being polite. It Thank was you. fucking. Great. It, it's visually like in a really uh, an amazing movie. It's like they're they're traveling around in what looks like. Uh, well, how would you describe the the apparatus they're traveling in? It's like a stage show that travels, but it folds up and it's a house. It's this it's like, just, almost this very weird gigantic wagon, horse drawn that opens up. You know, like like a, a pop up book, mm -hmm. and it kind of opens up like that. And there's this fantastic little stage there with this strange show going on. It's the idea was that this thing almost comes from another time into a modern city and it's the most extraordinary thing you've ever seen and nobody's paying attention <laughs> yeah <laughs> they're too busy drinking or shopping and there's wondrousness there and that, this is this is dr parnassus and his traveling Amer imaginarium it's so it's so great because i won't give anything away but there's one scene where this thing is parked on top of a bridge and it's in a modern city and there's this thing from what looks like the 1800s parked and there's a oh, guy wow. who is, is hanging by the neck under a bridge and it's just fucking <laughs> it's just a great movie tom waits is in it uh he, he's fantastic uh, oh, he's gr gr brilliant we gotta ask you about Heath Ledger yeah yeah, yeah. I mean that almost blew the whole project I mean well halfway through the film uh, we just finished shooting in London we've been four weeks and uh, we you know we finished on a Saturday night uh, Heath went to New York I went to Vancouver where we're gonna do all the blue screen work and two days later um, I come into the office and there on the, uh, the BBC website Heath Ledger found dead which was Clearly impossible. I mean, we've been together. A yeah, right. Before. I was going to ask you, were there any signs on set, right? This man was so full of life and vitality and fun. And, and even now, I mean, we're now talking two year and a half, two years, whatever it's been. It's uh, it's hard to even 
put it, get, work it out in my head what happened, because I don't know what happened. He just suddenly was alive, and then he was dead. And we had a little problem then. How do you finish a film halfway mm-hmm. through when the star mm-hmm. isn't there? And I didn't really know what I was going to do, but I called Johnny Depp up, because he was a very close friend, a close friend of Heath's. And I said, I don't know what to do. I might just go home, close the whole thing down, because I don't know. And he says, well, whatever you decide to do, I'll be there. Wow. And that was the beginning of the salvation of the movie. And then I basically did a little bit of rewriting uh, and decided every time you go through this magic mirror in the Imaginarium, yeah. if you're with somebody else, their imagination may, may be stronger than yours, and they may be imagining you the way they would like you to be. And suddenly you have oh, passed wow. the Johnny Depp. Colin Farrell and Jude Law all become other aspects of the ca- character that Heath was playing. And it works. And people who've seen it, who don't know the whole story, just assume it was written. And that's how it was written. What's, wow. ama- what's amazing is you got those three guys. Yeah, but I mean, I just started that. calling close friends of Heath because I really wanted to keep it in the family. <laughs> and, mm-hmm. Yeah. And, and they were able to adjust their schedules, and, and we did it. And they did it, and to make it even more amazing, they did it for nothing. They gave all their money to his daughter. Oh, wow. So, wow. This does not happen in no, showbiz. No. It's the one we, we would like to. But it, and I don't think it's ever happened in the cinema. And the fact that uh, it works is what... I begin to think at a certain point, I get almost spiritual about it. I think there's a movie god making the movie. Sure. I'm not. I'm just the hand that writes everyone, this thing. Yeah. Everyone is saying you pulled it off. Everybody. Because oh, yeah. yeah. most people at first are like, wow, I guess this is it. There's no way he's going to be able to you know, figure this one out. But you did. It works. You I mean, definitely did. Yep. The reviews on it are great. Oh, it's a fantastic... I, mean, I don't normally like my movies. This one <laughs> is extraordinary because I don't think I made it. I think the movie got made it. I, <laughs> why don't you like your movies? No, I get... Listen, when just because you're, you're too close to yeah, it. Yeah, when you've been on them so long and, you, and, and when you're cutting a movie, I've probably seen it 150 times at All a certain right, yeah. point. Enough. I want to get on and start living a life again. Sure. Yeah. But no, I, lo- I, wa- I also want to be able to get away from them. So maybe 10 years later, I can come back and look at them and see them like, not me, but as just any old buddy going in and watching a movie. Mm-hmm. I've never seen one of my own movies, not as me. <laughs> really? Yeah, true. So, <laughs> Yeah, I always wonder about uh, directors that have such a distinct look to their films. I mean, you could look at Kubrick obviously uh, uh spielberg's another one that you just watch the movie and from the camera moves uh, you just know it's a spielberg movie you have that also you just you watch the movie and just from the way the camera's moving uh and other aspects of the direction you know it's you uh are you conscious of doing that or is that just something that that yeah. happens like handwriting would or yeah it is it's that i Sometimes I'm, people want to talk about it, and I don't know what they're talking about because I, really? I yeah. can't describe it. I don't know what it is I do. I just do. It's the way I see things. It's as simple as that. And I obviously have astigmatism or something going on there because it doesn't look like <laughs> yeah. other people's stuff. It's, it's just odd to me because, you, you know, and, and it's such a simplistic way to put it because it's like saying, all right, an artist has a paintbrush and a canvas and some paint. Uh, yeah. They should all look the same. Yeah. But you're taking a camera, a lens, and moving it. <laughs> <laughs> but somehow you're doing it differently than anyone else and putting such a distinct look on it mm. that you, you identify it as one of your movies. And and it is uh, such an original and and just stunning look to a movie. I really, uh, that's what I, I, I love about your films. 12 Monkeys was a, a yeah. great example of when he's uh, in the future and everything almost had a fisheye lens look to it. It was a very weird, detached place. Fear know? and Loathing in Las Vegas, also a really, really yeah, yeah, shot. Just movie. an amazing movie. There's a kind of, I don't know, you get yourself into the movie, and then I, mean, I do incredible research, prepare for the whole thing and on every level, and also I'm I'm kind of playing God, because I get to create a world, and every detail, I'm involved in the mm. detail. And then That's because obvious, I, yeah. Yeah, I use wide-angle lenses, because it's about not just people, but it's about people in an environment, a mm-hmm. place, so that you know everything is part of the the storytelling. Yeah, it's process. always very big. Yeah, uh, yeah there's mm-hmm. a lot of a lot of size and grandeur to uh, to your shots. You That's, smoke a lot of pot. Interestingly <laughs> enough, I don't. <laughs> Where's Where that craziness coming from? I don't know. <laughs> Natural mutation. Darwin would be so excited about what's going on in my head because your imagination is just. Wow. It's, I mean, actually, it was really wow. funny. With Python and all my movies, they always thought we were druggies. Right. And never, we never were. Really? No, we just, you know, it's uh, that awful John Denver natural high business, which I was a guy. But I, I realized right. I'm a natural high guy. <laughs> <laughs> 
A little booze? <laughs> ah, yes. Now you're right, single right, malt you whiskey. Go. You're fine ah. tequila. Now we're talking. Okay, there you go. <laughs> hey, how do you feel about, like, uh, like usually comedy is taking you off guard, which it is. It's catching you yeah. by surprise. Like, something like uh, a brilliant thing like Sellers and the Pink Panther being remade oh. and uh, bastardized um, here. I was on the plane uh, a few months ago coming over, uh, coming to L.A., and there it was. There was Steve Martin's Pink Panther, which mm. I hadn't seen, and I couldn't believe what I was watching. <laughs> and luckily, the original Pink Panther was on as well, and I switched on to that. And <laughs> you just realize how sublimely brilliant uh, Sellers was and how... I mean, I know Steve. He's a really brilliant guy. I don't know what he was thinking. I don't know yeah, what he thought he was for doing. Saying that it's a yeah, terrible, thank you for saying that terrible bastardization we, of a great, great film we, and a great yeah. character. We hate when comedies are remade. We just hate it. Other movies yeah. you remake them because, like Anthony has brought up, you know, the technology is different, so you can give it a, a cooler look or, or yeah. whatever. But comedies, leave them alone. They no, are no. what they are. Exactly, and especially when it's something so you know specific. It was Peter Sellers is what made that right, 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 exactly. And so, okay, I'm going to be the new Peter Sellers, and I'm. Steve Martin. It's a completely, actually, a completely different kind of comedy. Yep. It's a different kind of character. I mean, when I saw, because I hadn't seen the original for so long, and Sellers, he broke your heart because it was so, he was so innocent in this thing. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and his wife is cheating on everybody is cheating on him, and he's just floating through it. <laughs> it it's. Is it ter I love that kind of comedy. It makes me cry at the same time I'm laughing. <laughs> mm -hmm. Like Planes, Trains, and Automobiles was a good one. John Candy was such a sap, such a broken sap mm -hmm. of a guy. And Steve Martin was great in that yeah. as a prick. I don't know what he's like. I've only met him once for half a second. But I imagine that's what he's really like. Well, that's, so it came off as great. So I, I like the uh, the English version of The Office oh. so oh. much better than the American version because it's uh, you... You feel bad for the guy because he's such an ass. You got it. He's just such an ass. And it's not this over-the-top, um, psychotic thing that they wound up doing no. with the American character. It's just this sad sack who thinks he's funny and... Yep. And ca people just criticize him right to his face, and he doesn't want to acknowledge it, but he does know. Like, that to me is brilliant. Yeah. I love that. I mean, I, it's really funny, because it had come out, it would become a big success, the whole first series, and I, I'm always in my own world, so I hadn't watched any of it. And I was over at my brother-in-law's brother house for Christmas, and he had the box set of the whole mm -hmm. first series. And I put one on, saying, you've got to see what the office is like. And, and it's put like one on. I watched, the, I watched yeah. the whole series. That was keep it. Going. Guilty. Yep. Did the same exact thing. Yeah. is I, brilliant. I, yep. But, I mean, it's sad sack. He's so desperate. But the idea of having like a documentary film yeah, being yeah. made, and he's always smiling to the camera. He's, he's got a special Playing relationship the with the, the camera. It is there's an genius. there's an <laughs> awkwardness and an embarrassment that you feel. It doesn't it doesn't just make you laugh. You actually are cringing for exactly. this guy, yeah. and to evoke that from somebody an emotion like where you're alone watching it, yet you're embarrassed to be sitting there. <laughs> exactly. It amazes me it, that they could do that. What it, happened in America? Who did it here? Uh, Steve, Steve Carell. Carell. And, and, and mm. you know something? The first oh, you've season, never seen it? No. The first no. season, they kind of got away with huh. it because they yeah. were really doing verbatim the, the English show. Uh, and then it turned into Carell just kind of taking the character into a whole other area of just being oh, retarded. Really just turning retarded instead of just that That's naive kind yeah. of weird. And it's gone now forever. Yeah. It'll yeah, never come back, hopefully. I don't <laughs> think so. Well, the, the, it's uh, still the on. American show is still on. But yes. the, the, the spirit of the uh, English version lives on. Oh, my favorite Ricky Gervais. One yeah, of my favorite brilliant. moments is uh, is when he does the dance. Everybody talks about the big dance. Yeah, yeah. But it's before that when uh, he, he hints that he, you know, if you want to dance, you should have called me. And they're like, you dance? And he goes, yeah, yeah. If you flash dance with MC Hammer. Of shit, and like, <laughs> like that was his idea of a great, <laughs> fucking innovative way for a hip yeah. guy to dance. And so like, yeah. you want to just hang yourself watching it. Yeah. Why do you think so many shows, uh, especially uh, back in the seventies, really just came from England? They uh, a lot of the writers, I guess Norman Lear, yeah. um, decided, hey, we'll take this idea, incorporate it into a uh, American lifestyle, like All in the Family was. Uh, Sanford and uh, Son was Steptoe and, and Son. Yeah. Um, yeah, it's it's just odd that uh, we decided that it would work like that. But what I think what was happening was that in England, uh, particularly the BBC where, where Python was, they were very totally laissez-faire. Once they said yes to a show, that was it. You didn't have executives coming around. There. <laughs> you just did the show. I mean, they and and it was that kind of freedom I think that allowed really great comedy to mm -hmm. to, to come out of England. Where in, in in the states it was still like the three main uh, networks. It was only when cable came that suddenly the floodgates open and cable suddenly then the Simpsons and suddenly we got South Park. We got, and 
I find American comedy now is probably better than, than mm. what is going on in well, England. Well, the problem is uh, cartoons still have freedom. Yeah, yeah. Yes. yeah we talk about that a lot on our show too. You know, like the South Park and Family Guy could do whatever they want, but you, you know, now if it's not a cartoon, then there's all sorts of problems, and you can't do this and that, which is ruining, you know, good comedy. I only discovered Family Guy about I don't know, probably seven months ago. Wow. I watch it consistently. It's amazing. Yeah. It's amazing. It is wonderful. Yeah. Has he ever been on Seth MacFarlane? A few times. Yeah. yeah. What's he like? What is he? Pretty he's, boring. Yeah, he's, <laughs> yeah. he's actually. Pretty, I, I mean, a I'm pretty pretty Family Guy, guy. but yeah. <laughs> He's nothing he, like you, Terry. He, well, he's much like funnier pulling, than was, I am. He's there, brilliant. It was like pulling <laughs> teeth with him, to be really? honest with you. But, but scene, we're still a big fan. You know? A scene in one of last night's uh, episodes where uh, they're obviously a quick quick cut, and they change, uh, they're, they're in a lab with a, a rabbit, and they put lipstick on the rabbit like they're testing cosmetics, <laughs> and then just shoot the rabbit's head off <laughs> and go, yes, the lipstick isn't bulletproof. <laughs> it's just yeah. killing a it's, little funny it's rabbit. It's brilliant stuff. Yeah. Great. I mean, England, England has kind of lost it at the moment. I mean, Little Britain, does it come... Have you seen the English version of Little Britain? I liked it. Yeah. It mm -hmm. became repetitive, though. Yeah. I mean, if you watch a lot of it... It didn't, get it, it didn't take off didn't here, off. unfortunately. We yeah. had those guys in. We yeah. liked them. They're very funny. And the first few episodes I saw, I, I definitely liked the show. Yeah. It was different in England? No, it was the same thing, except they got to do more, and after a while they started repeating themselves a bit too much. And that, that was the thing I liked about Python. When we felt, ultimately, we were repeating ourselves, we just pulled the plug. And yeah. It was over. Because uh, we're not surprising ourselves anymore. We're just doing the same shit. Do you, do you, know, you consider yourself, like, America? Do you live in America or England? Or are you no, I have, two homes? I, know, I hope I, the police aren't listening, but <laughs> I am no longer an American. Oh. Two years, or was it three now, I renounced my American citizenship. Wow. Having lived 42 years in England and paying taxes in two countries for all that time and discovering ah. when I kick the bucket, the Americans will assess everything I own in the world and pay, make me pay death duty. Not me. My wife and my wife yeah, actually exactly. have to sell the house to pay death duties. And Not, so I said, enough. Good for I, you. I always heard that England, like for years, was always, oh my God, the taxes over there. Oh, it's crazy. But now I guess it's the other way around. No, it's, it's not. It's just the fact that you know what happens. I mean, we had a, we bought a house years ago, twenty five years ago, for X amount of money, and as property does, it's skyrocketed. Mm -hmm. and, and just the house alone, the, the death duties on that, she would have to sell the house to pay. It, it's it, unbelievable. Yeah, the, the thought of paying tax after you die on yeah. your stuff Who came up with that, that you, one that you bought with death tax duty. money. Yeah, yeah. Is who came just up with that? that? Enough. And I mean, I've been rough enough on her in 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 life, and <laughs> I, I didn't think I should do it after I'm dead. Yeah. <laughs> no. I gotta jump in. Some slack. Uh, you, I, I hear you have a hard out at eight thirty. So oh, yeah. hard, yeah. what? I hard, hard out. out. A hard out. What is that? <laughs> a hard on. Terry Gilliam's got a hard out. I have one question for Terry Gilliam. It's important. Sure. How after forty two years have you not adopted the phony accent that Madonna picked up in three days? <laughs> yeah, I know. The woman's a chameleon. She's a chameleon. I mean, she took up tweeds and sitting on horses. And I bumped into Guy Ritchie in uh, the airport one time, and she had fallen off the horse and. This photo shoot <laughs> broke her arm. She hates horses, he said. But he had worked very. She had worked very hard to become a Tweety English oh, horse riding geez. woman. No, no. She yeah. got the Kabbalah though. That's why she's, she can do this yeah, thing. She's she's a Jewish woman. mysticism can change your accent overnight. Yes. <laughs> All of a sudden, she's talking like this, and yeah, you're like, but exactly. "Wait, wait a minute! You're from where's she from? Detroit or something?" And yeah, no, she's Italian. Yeah. 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 yeah where's the Chaconi? Yeah. yeah Chaconi is right. Well, the, ready. the movie uh, we didn't realize you had to leave at eight thirty. Uh, it, when I saw it, I'll watch the rest of it today. It was Absolutely. honestly fantastic. Great. It's, uh, the acting is amazing. It's beautifully shot, and uh, it's just it's uh, it completely unprecedented. Predictable. Like I never felt like I knew what was about to happen in the next uh, scene from the moment Ledger's introduced to Tom Waits's character. It's fantastic. That's uh, like the, many of this gentleman's movies. None of it, it is really predictable. Is. Yeah, it's, none you, of it. You don't sit there and just go, "Oh, oh I know what's going to happen." Yeah, it's, no. at the end you're just going, "Holy shit!" The funny <laughs> thing about it is. Kids, I've had seven, eight, year, nine year old kids because adults see it and think it's too sophisticated. Yeah. Kids get it before adults do. Hmm. Adults have gotten frightened, structured, and they're missing the joy of Good, uh, I guess imagination. Wow. It helps in my state of arrested development that I've been in for <laughs> yeah. my entire life. He's got to go. Yeah, he's got to go. go. Turn Turn movies, thank not you. without a photo. The, imagine photo. the Imaginarium of Dr. Parnassus comes out Christmas Day. Uh, it, I really, I highly recommend it. It's easy to recommend this one. It was Absolutely. fucking unbelievable. And please come back and see us. We're, we're big, huge fans. Yeah, we're, we're, we're just getting started with you. We can talk about a lot of stuff. Tiger's That's blonde what I'm saying. The yeah. woman? Yeah. 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 We weren't lying to you. The oh, story Jesus. continues. Oh, no. Blonde woman rushed to the hospital from Tiger's house. Don't go, OJ on us. Don't go, OJ. Exactly. 
Exactly. I was saying this could be bigger than OJ. Oh, I think there's a lot more that's going to come out before this thing calms down. The great Terry Gilliam. Thank you, sir. Thank you, guys. I can go and talk dirty somewhere else now. Man, that Terry Gilliam shit. Wow. Hey, it's cool, man. The fucking legend. I, I, I tweeted, I go, if you don't know who Terry Gilliam is, Google his ass. And then some people said, don't insult us, we know who he is. I'm talking about, like, maybe... Dumb people. Maybe dumb people or younger <laughs> listeners. I don't know. Yeah. The guy is a fucking legend. I was telling Ann, it all started with Monty Python when we were growing up. Yeah. When you felt like you knew or, or uh, uh, you were getting into comedy or whatever, and what was funny... You felt like you you knew a little more by by being into Monty Python. Yeah, if you, you know what I mean. If you have if you have friends that didn't get it, they uh, you either got it or did it. They weren't your friends anymore. It was like it was kind of like a crossroad. You know, you're uh, so right. In high school, something like oh, yeah. Monty Python. Uh, all right, bye. Uh, not, I can't be bothered with you. Yeah. I got to find some Monty Python fans immediately. I don't get it. I don't. You don't. All right, take it easy. You, yeah. But do you think you either got it or didn't? Yeah. As was, far as Monty Python goes? It was definitely one of those the, shows. The meaning of life. When, yeah. the, when the Protestant broad is just, you know... No, the Catholic broad, sorry. Yeah, yeah. is just having kids left and right. And right. One, one falls on the lino, linoleum floor yeah. in the in the kitchen and, and she goes, Could someone get that? Right. And then the Protestant couple across the street, because they practice safe, you know, fucking sex, have, have no fucking kids. It was, uh, especially back the 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 actual TV show... Just like I was saying, those non sequiturs, those things that would just pop in. Right. And now for something completely different. Sure. And then they would just change. No no segue, no nothing. Right. And it was uh you know, it was brilliant. It would make me laugh. But and wow. some people just didn't get it. They and I'm like, oh. and I'm really happy that uh it looks like the new Terry Gilliam movie is gonna be just fucking great. I really did love Jim what I saw, it. man. I I just literally it was just physically too late to finish it. Good. But Good. God damn, is it well shot and brilliantly acted. I, I loved it. And they figured out the Heath Ledger thing nicely. So. Really smart, yeah. 